algebra is one of the most important topics to know for the SAT. So in this video, I'm just going to cover the basics of algebra. A lot of this is probably review for you, but if you have at all any issues with algebra, the basics of it, you definitely want to watch this video and pay attention because it's going to review basically how we set up equations, we combine terms, and how we solve equations. So let's start with the basics, adding and subtracting versus multiplying and dividing. There should be a slash there. 2x plus 3x. How do I add these? Well, the simple thing to do is just take the coefficients and add them up and then put an x next to it. So this is just going to add to 5x. And subtracting would be similar. You would just subtract the coefficients and there you would go. So it's 7x minus 9x equals negative 2x. Fair enough. Why does this happen? Well, you can see it's really just a consequence of the distributive property. So again, if I have this expression, 2x plus 3x, I can factor out a common x out of both of these terms. So I factor out my x, have my parentheses. What's left over? Well, it's a 2 plus a 3 left over. What's 2 plus 3? Well, 5. So this is just 5 times x. That's where it comes from, but the shortcut is you just add the coefficients, and there you go. What about something like this? 4x minus negative 2x plus x squared. Well, I can go ahead and kind of distribute my negative. I'll get 4x plus 2x plus x squared. And that's the same thing as 6x plus x squared. But notice I have to stop because I can only add these terms when my x's have the same exponent. So here it's a 1, just not written. And this is a 2, so I can't combine these in any way. You cannot combine these terms when you're adding. If you had something like 3x squared plus 7x squared, then yeah, they're both x squared, so I'll just combine those to 10x squared. So that's a very important part. Know that when you add them or subtract them, they have to have the same number of x's in order for you to combine them. Well, how about multiplying and dividing? Well, if I multiply x times x, what do I get? Well, we get x squared, and we'll talk more about the exponent rules later, but just remember that when I'm multiplying two x's, I get x squared. You're basically adding the exponents. One and one gives us two. I could do something like, what is 2x cubed times x squared? Just add the exponents, 2x to the fifth. What about dividing? Well, dividing, how about 4x squared divided by 2x squared? It's just subtracting. Oh, let's do 4x to the fourth, sorry. Divided by 2x squared. Well, just go ahead and subtract the exponents. So this is going to leave us with x squared. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. Another example. How about 7? Let's clear this out quick. How about 7 x to the fifth divided by 7x to the third. Well, we're subtracting the exponents. One way you can see this so that it makes sense is remember what an exponent is. It just means times that many times. So this is the same thing as 7 times x times x times x times x times x, right? 5x's divided by 7 times x times x times x, 3x's. And then I just start canceling. 7 here, 7 here, x, 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 x. Um, x, x. So what am I left with? Well, I'm left with just two x's on the top, so it's just x squared. And that, again, makes sense. The sevens cancel, subtract my exponents, and I get x squared, right? So, again, overall basic stuff, nothing crazy, uh, just what you need to know to do the basics of at least manipulating these equations. Let's talk about solving for x. Now, when you're solving for x, there are two major rules to doing algebra equations. The first rule, the objective really, is you want to get x by itself. You want to get x equals something. Preferably some number, right? You want to, that's the whole point of algebra, is to find that solution. So to do that, what we're doing is basically unwinding the equation. We're doing things to the equation to get it to that primitive x equals state. So the rule for this is number two, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. So you can't target individual terms. This is very important. Let me show you some examples. Let's imagine we have the equation 9x plus 7 equals negative 2. So I need to get the x by itself. Let's first things first get rid of this plus 7. So let me subtract 7. Now notice I'm subtracting 7 from both sides. It looks like I'm subtracting 7 from just the 7. And in a sense, I'm doing that. But it's just because you know, you're subtracting it from both sides. And where this goes, you can put it anywhere you want. So I'm just going to have the 7 cancel the negative. You know, This negative 7 cancel the positive 7. So that's one thing. It's going to matter when we get to the multiplying or dividing part. Let's actually make this 9x divided by 6. Actually, 9x over 5. All right, so I go ahead and I subtract that. So this becomes 0 plus 9x over 5. And this equals negative 2 minus 7 is negative 9. Okay, well, what do I do now? 
so this is the same thing as 9x over 5 equals negative 9. Let me go ahead and multiply to get rid of this 5. So let me multiply both sides by 5. And again, I'm multiplying both sides, not just targeting this term by 5, even though it may look like it. If I had something like x plus 3 equals 10, if I multiply both sides by 2, I would have to multiply both sides by 2, or both terms by 2, not just the x. That's what I mean by you can't target individual terms. So going back to this, the 5's cancel. We're left with 9x equals negative 45. Let me divide both sides by 9 to get rid of the 9 here. And I'm left with x is negative 5, which would be the answer for this particular question. So those are your two major rules. Those are the two major things you've got to remember when you're doing your algebra. So those are the basics of algebra. Obviously, we're going to see a lot more questions in the math uh, boot camp and in the SAT Math Tactics series.